So let's dive in. So I'm so excited you're here for this free call on transforming fear into faith. And we're going to go over three key strategies to move from anxiety to excitement. And this is a topic that I'm super passionate about. And I can't wait to dive into these transformational tools with you. So on this call, I'm going to walk you through three key strategies to give you breakthrough results. And my purpose is for you to walk away feeling like you've reconnected to your faith and trust. And there's a saying that faith is what we were born with and fear is something that we learn here. So my intention is really to get you back to a place where you're feeling uplifted. But before we begin, I just want to go over some logistics again. So make sure you have a piece of paper and pen or something to write with. And if you have questions that come up, you can write them down and you can email me at Anna at Self in the City. That's A-N-N-A at S-E-L-F-I-N-T-H-E-C-I-T-Y dot com. Or nearing the end of this call, um, we'll be doing some live Q&A. So write your questions down and um, be sure to speak up at the end. And also at the end, we'll be doing some active exercises to give you some direct experience. So it should be fun and really ho helping you get into, into your body. So after a long day with lots of things going on in each of our lives, let's take a moment to come into the present for this call. So I invite you to gently close your eyes and breathe in and out through your nostrils, feeling your belly expand on the inhale and contract on the exhale, paying attention to the gentleness of the breath. Noticing if you're holding any tension in areas of your body and simply allowing yourself to relax. So let go of anything that happened throughout your day. Let go of any distractions in your mind so you can be fully present for this call. And take two more deep inhales and exhales on your own. Now open your eyes. Isn't it amazing what a little breathing can do? I just think it's so amazing that the breath is so powerful. We have access to this tremendous, most powerful tool all the time, yet we pay absolutely no attention to it most of the time. And when you just take a few moments to pay attention to your breath, it can really change your emotional state. And when you're in a more calm and peaceful emotional state, it helps you make clearer decisions. So it's, it's, the breath is really just amazing. And the awesome part is that it doesn't cost anything and we always have access to it. So um, let's get started. So for those of you who don't know me, and even the, for those who do, I want to share a little bit about myself and how I found my passion to do this work. As a little girl, I was gifted with athletic ability, and I love to play sports, and I still do. When I was about nine years old, I was at um, a soccer camp with a friend, and she invited me to go to tennis camp. So I said, sure, I'll go to tennis camp. And I started going to tennis camp, and on the first day, I hit a ball, and the coach said, whoa, do that again. So he fed me the ball again, and I did it again. And he saw my potential, and at the end of camp, he called my mom and told her that she had a tennis player in her hands. And he started advising us on taking steps to begin playing tournaments and getting a ranking. So I began playing lots of tennis, and then before you know it, I entered my first tennis tournament. And it was a round robin, which basically means you play several matches even if you lose. Well, I lost every match. And it wasn't that I didn't have the skill or the potential. It was that I wasn't tournament tough. And a referee actually came up to my mom. My mom was getting a lot of advice at this point and said that 
I needed to improve my mental game. And that was really my first introduction to learning skills such as how to improve my focus, not letting my nerves get in my way, and really preparing my mind to be a winner. And that's really where I needed more training than the physical. Yes, I had to practice and, and all of that, but my mind was really the, the place that I needed to do a lot of work. And so there you have it. That was my first intro in becoming interested in the mental game and understanding how the mind works. And I even saw a sports psychologist at one point who helped me, and I started winning, and I started winning tournaments, and I was ranked top 10 in the Mid-Atlantic and top 150 in the country, and um, I even won the Maryland State Tennis Championship where I, where I grew up. And I just prepared so much mentally for these matches that I succeeded in that it made the biggest difference in my results. And then I went on and I went to Penn State where I played tennis and I also got my undergrad in psychology. And after I graduated college, I moved to New York in 2003 and I first started teaching tennis at the Midtown Tennis Club, which is in Manhattan um, in in the Chelsea area. And I was teaching adults and I realized that they would start to swing and I could see this tremendous amount of potential But what would happen is they would swing, and then they would have this thought, like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to hit the ball out. They would get afraid, and they would stop. They would physically stop. And what would happen is that ball would actually go out because the follow-through in tennis actually keeps the ball in. So I started to notice that these adults were fearful, and it was impacting their ability to really access their potential and relax and enjoy and and have fun playing tennis and keeping the ball in. So I started working with them on on the mental game. And that was really where I found that I had the most joy. And so I did that for a couple of years. And then my dad is a therapist and he gave me a book on life coaching and I read it and I thought, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. But it took me some time to actually gain the courage and get over my own fear. And it wasn't until I applied same methods that I've been learning in tennis to my life where I actually was able to start my own business and build my own business. Because for a while, deep down inside, I knew that I wanted to have my own business, but I was really frightened. And I had several jobs in between uh, teaching tennis to starting my own business. And um, it really was until I was like, enough is enough. And I had to really listen to what I truly wanted and I just couldn't take the pain of not listening anymore that I really took that leap. So I'm super excited about this topic because I use this, these methods in my life on a day-to-day basis, and I'm, I just can't wait to share them with you. So uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about fear and the general sense before we get started with the keys. So the absolute number one thing that stops us is fear. Let me say that again. The absolute number one thing that stops us is fear. And fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Why? Because fear typically stops us from even starting. So we have so many different fears, and the the list is really endless. And some people have a fear of success. Some people have a fear of failure, which is basically the same thing. But it really stops us from starting It stops us from starting a business. It stops us going on dates because we're afraid of rejection or commitment. And maybe we fear what other people are going to think so we don't take action. There's just so many. And sorry to be a bummer here, but fear doesn't go away. And as one of my mentors says, new level, new devil. So it's not that we want to push fear away. And sometimes we think, oh, when I achieve this or when I have this, then I won't be afraid anymore. That's really not the case. But the good news is, is that we can work with fear, and we can change our relationship to fear, which will make all the difference in our life experience. So take a moment to reflect on something that you were afraid of in your past, and then you busted through it. So just take a moment and think, and it might be um, speaking up about something, but typically when we bust through our fear, fear, it feels great. And we can even remember this as a little kid. Like maybe we we're afraid of diving into the pool and then you did it and you were so excited. 
Because ultimately, to the, on the other side of fear is excitement. And if we want to live an exciting life, we have to work with fear. There's just no way around it. But maybe right now you're feeling a little stuck and you're wondering, okay, I get it, makes sense, um, but how do I actually do this? And maybe you have a job that you don't like and you're sitting at the computer counting down the hours knowing you're here to do so much more, but you have no clue what you want to do. Or maybe you're aware of what you want, but you find yourself falling into old patterns, self-destructive behaviors, and you're just tired of getting in your own way. Or sometimes fear shows up when we're in a new relationship or even in an old relationship where we're constantly worried what will happen, why hasn't he texted, and before you know it, you're freaking out. So we experience fear in all different ways, and fear is something that's normal. It's something that we all experience. So it's not that, it doesn't mean that that because you have fear, nobody else does. And once you start to recognize other people's fear, you'll see that this is really part of the human experience. So it's something that's normal. Um, and maybe you've even read some books and you've tried to work on this, but you haven't really managed it, managed to really take control of this. And hopefully these three keys that I'm going to give you tonight will help you take action immediately. So if you're anything like how I used to be, I totally get it. It's that you overthink and you get stuck in analysis paralysis. And, and this is really about taking action and not letting the fear stop you. But first, we have to recognize what's in our way. So key number one is you are not your limited thoughts. One of our biggest mistakes is that we think we have an accurate view of ourselves and that our limitation is an accurate measure of ourselves. This is the main cause to why we feel afraid. This is why we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone, try new things, see challenges as opportunities, etc., because we're so identified with these limited thoughts. We'll say things to our friends like, no, you don't understand, this is just how I am. And really, on some level, we believe that we're stuck in someone who is fixed and can't change. And this is a very limited view of ourselves. And if we have this view, it will make sense why we're afraid to take action. Because on some level, we believe that we're not good enough, so it doesn't even seem worth it. So you know that voice in your head that is limited, that's constantly telling you why you're not good enough, how you might fail, looking at all the things that could go wrong, that's the voice that I'm talking about. And some people will say that that's the voice of the ego, and I'm one of those people that would say that. Um, but I'm not going to get into the details about the ego today. But at the end of this call, I will be sharing more info about upcoming courses and, and greater details about this. But back to the limited voice in your head. If you reflect on your day, and just take a moment to reflect, you can see that pretty much we're just thinking about our limitations all day. And if you're not, I apologize. Or maybe you think, not me, I'm a pretty positive person. But you have to be careful because this voice is sneaky. So sometimes you have to really investigate and check because we have an intention to be positive, but underneath we're thinking quite negative. And once again, this is part of the human condition is that um, 80% to 90% of our thoughts are limited. So it's something that we really have to train, essentially train in and work to really investigate that these thoughts are just thoughts. We give our thoughts way too much power. And there's a quote by Buddha, and he says, the mind creates our world. So if we have a limited mind, we essentially have a limited world. So it's really about practicing expanding our view and not thinking so limited. But first, we have to recognize that we are thinking that we're, li we're limited. Um, so don't just take what I say as the truth, but investigate on your own. Just check in and see if you expand a limiting thought, what happens? You know, play with this. Be an explorer. So uh, something that, that's been a challenge for me that I've struggled with is writing. 
And growing up in school, I wasn't that good of a writer, and I always struggled with writing papers. And I developed this really low sense of confidence about my writing. And I developed these limiting thoughts about my ability to really succeed with writing. And I love to write. So it's a big part of my job. It's a big part of also something that I love to do. And I've written articles, and I've even written an ebook, and I write newsletters. But every time I go to write, I have these thoughts that I'm not a good writer, I don't know how to write, I don't know grammar, and I have all this mental noise, but I don't let it block me. I simply just recognize, and I don't let it interfere with my ability to take action. And what has happened over time, as I continue to write and really give it some energy, I notice myself improving, and that's really a big part of letting go of this idea of the identification with the limitation, because we think that this, we hold on so tightly to these, these limitations. I could, I could say I'm not a good writer the rest of my life, and it could prevent me from writing ever, but I, I've learned to recognize that voice, but not let it block me. Or identify, and I start to identify with myself as somebody who can improve my writing. And then I create opportunity for myself. And this is really how we want to shift from identifying from ourselves from someone who's limited to somebody who can improve. Because sometimes our greatest weaknesses can be transformed into our greatest strengths. And sometimes our greatest gifts are underneath our greatest weaknesses. Sometimes they're really clear and they're, we're able to see them, but sometimes they're hidden because we're just thinking so limited. And going back to the first key is that we really think that we have this accurate view of ourselves. But we can see from our friends and our family, like sometimes we'll say, you know, I might say to a friend, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a terrible writer, I hate writing. And they would say, no, Anna, you're a really good writer. Where does that come from? It doesn't necessarily mean that my view is right but we hold on to our view as if it's right so tightly. But we can see that that's not necessarily true. So we have to, we're pretty tightly wound. We have to unwind a little bit and just free ourselves from these, these limited ideas that we've created. Even if they, they have some truth in it, doesn't mean that they can't change. And it's really about recognizing progress because at the end of the day, Progress equals happiness. And when we're not making progress, we feel quite unhappy. So let me ask you this. Are you the same exact person you are today as you were last year? You don't have to answer because you guys are on mute. But just in your own mind, think, are you the same exact person today as you were last year? And if your answer is yes, you're not connected with reality. Because the reality is is that we can change and that we are changing moment by moment. Most likely you're another year older. Most likely lots of things have happened, maybe not exactly the way that you've wanted them to, but you've changed and you've grown in certain ways, and we have to bring our attention to our growth and how we've made progress. Because most of the time we're just so focused on what's gone wrong. And it creates a lot of fear in our lives. And sometimes we can have these insights and we can change quickly, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but we have to understand that we have the ability. Our ability is really unlimited. We actually have unlimited potential, and there's no, like, stamp on any one of us that says you can only go this far in life. It's really unlimited, and and it's really as far as you let your mind take you. And at the end, I'll be taking you through a process to help you expand the vision. So um, I have this client, and she was in a relationship in the past, and it wasn't a great relationship, and she was with this guy for several years, and she was engaged, and at the end, they broke it off, they never got married, and, um, you know, she, she was really upset about it, and it was a difficult relationship, and she spent some time working on herself, and she spent you know, plenty of time improving herself, looking at um, different parts of where things had gone wrong, et cetera. So now a couple years have passed since they split up, and now she's met this new guy. And so far it seems as though their relationship is great and everything's going well, yet she's so stuck in this idea of how she used to be 
in her past relationship. She's actually relating to herself as that same old person, even though she is very different. Does she have some similarities as she used to? Yeah, of course. But she's improved so much, yet she's not relating to herself in that way. And it's impacting her ability to enjoy this relationship. And the relationship is actually going really well, and she's really happy, yet she's still stuck in holding herself as this person who is in this negative relationship. So we're working on undoing some of those seeds in her mind to help her realize that she is not that person anymore. But we come, become so identified with these thoughts. So you want to think of your thoughts like water, like the element of water. They will come and go. A fearful thought will arise. We can anticipate all of us, myself included in that, will experience fear in our lives. At some point or the other in the future, we can prepare for that. But we want to see these thoughts as like water. And we want to make sure that we don't grasp onto it and make them who we are. A f- like a fearful person or a not good enough person, we don't want to make them part of our identity. We just want to recognize the flow of these thoughts. And before you know it, a new thought comes in. And what we want to start to develop is, is an understanding that we can, we can direct our minds and there, there's space in between our thoughts. And when we connect with the space in between the thought, our mind becomes more open and, our, and clear. From that point, we're able to make better decisions, and our decisions create our destiny. So it's, it's helpful to just use the visualization of flowing like water. Because at the end of the day, you are not your thoughts. And they seem so real, and they try to keep us safe, but they're really keeping you stuck. And they, help, they try to help us survive, but in, in the end, they, they keep us pretty boxed in. So listen carefully to that fearful voice in your head. And you can answer this on your own, but what does it say to you repeatedly? Repeatedly. What kind of tone of voice is the fearful voice in your head? What's the pace of it? A lot of times people will say the pace of their fear is fast. They have very fast thoughts. And you want to recognize these qualities because the more aware you are of fear, the more that you can work with it. Because then you can say, aha, there's fear, and you name it, and then you can clear it. And then you can actually break free. And one of my clients was having this experience, and um, he actually said to me, he said, I was able to see fear, and I was like, I see the fear, but I am not afraid. And that's the part, that's where you want to start to create some space in between the fear itself and these these limited thoughts, and knowing that you can, you can improve, you can change. So I'll leave you with these questions. What is something that you really, really want? I mean, you really, really want this. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a career change. Maybe it's losing weight or having better health or making more money. And then ask yourself, What are the limiting thoughts that are keeping me stuck? So I'll say that again. What are the limiting thoughts that are keeping me stuck? How are you relating to yourself in this area of your life? So, for example, if you're you're not in a relationship, but you want to be, maybe you're relating to someone who's going to be single, relating to yourself as somebody who's going to be single forever. Or maybe if you want a career change, you're relating to yourself as somebody who can't change and somebody who's going to fail. So you really just want to look at those thoughts because then ultimately what you can do is change them. So I'll leave you with this quote for key number one, and it's one of my favorite quotes. When things go wrong in our life, we typically encounter difficult situations, and we tend to regard the situation itself as our problem. But in reality, whatever problem we experience come from the side of the mind. If we respond to difficult situations with a positive or peaceful mind, 
they will not be problems for us. Indeed, we may even come to regard them as challenges or opportunities for growth and development. Problems arise only if we respond to difficulties with a negative state of mind. Therefore, if we want to be free from problems, we must transform our mind. So moving on to key number two. Key number two is familiarize yourself with fear. And I'll say that again because it's quite contrary to what we typically think. Familiarize yourself with fear. So typically, we try to run from fear. We try to push it away. And we do this through turning to alcohol, food, using our iPhones way too much, watching too much TV, etc. And we try to avoid any feelings that don't feel good and make us feel like we can't handle something and we're inf inferior or insecure. In other words, this is really about feeling feelings. Very different from the messages that we receive outside, in the outside world. And fear not only manifests in the mind from our thinking, but it also has physical symptoms that manifest in the body. And we, we have to get familiar with the feeling that we fear, feel in our body. So we stop avoiding and we start to cut through it. Because the biggest transformation that you can make is when you learn to move through fear and you learn to stay present with discomfort in your body. I don't know if any of you practice yoga, but I'm a big uh, yoga advocate. I practice yoga. I've been practicing for several years. But if you practice yoga, you'll know that yoga is quite uncomfortable. And I personally notice that when I'm in a pose, the first thing that I want to do when I'm feeling uncomfortable is I want to get out of it right away, immediately. That's where my mind goes. But this is really, and, and yoga is a lot about learning to stay. Even meditation, a lot of people will say, I practice meditation, I can't do it. It's just too hard. I have all these thoughts. It's not about not having thoughts, but it's learning to stay with those thoughts. And it's uncomfortable. And we don't like to feel uncomfortable. We like to figure out how can we be the most comfortable. But if we want to live an extraordinary, exciting life, we're going to be uncomfortable. We're going to be uncomfortable anyways, either way. Even if we don't do, even if we don't face our fears, that's, to me, that's more uncomfortable. I would rather go through my fear and have my life be exciting than sit afraid in my apartment um, dreaming about how it could be, okay? So, um, a common fear is public speaking. In fact, statistics show that people fear public speaking more than death. Death, and I just think that's so wild. Um, on a smaller level, we fear small things like speaking up, and we fear speaking up in a relationship. We fear speaking up with our friends, with our family, with our bosses. Um, this comes in many forms. One of them is sometimes we have a hard time saying no setting boundaries, what other people think of us. So we experience fear on a day-to-day -day basis, really. And I, I work with a lot of clients on this because um, they'll, they'll mention how they're afraid to say things at, wor at work quite often. And this is really about noticing what happens in our body and where in our body we experience fear. So some people say that they experience a sensation in their chest. It's quite tight and in their neck. And some people feel it in their legs, in their arms. And this is really about inquiring within, where in your body do you feel fear? And familiarizing yourself with the sensation and learning to sit with it so that the next time fear arises, it doesn't make you run. It makes you act and act on a different decision. Not the decision based on fear, but the decision that's based on excitement about getting you where you actually want to go. So um, practice, practice, start small. Start with a small project. It doesn't mean you know, quit your job tomorrow and start a business, but start with something small. It's really the little steps, and it could be like if you want to start a business, start brainstorming ideas, or if you want, or if you want to, speak up at work, start talking in meetings. Feel the fear and say it. If you have something that you want to say to a friend that you've been holding back, say it. 
And you can, you know, it's really important because this is, this is kind of challenging. It's really important to be gentle with ourselves in this process because if we start beating ourselves up, we're just going back to zero. So we really want to be gentle with ourselves. You know, we might say something at work. It might not go so well. But then we just have to, we have to realize that we made the progress of co- overcoming our fear. We might say something in our relationship. It might not go over so well. But we have to say, you know what? I made progress. I overcame my fear. And, you know, when we, when we let down our, our ego, so to speak, and that kind of limited view, and we're more open, and we, we'll, we'll notice that we actually have a little bit more, I want to say it's kind of a funny word, but kind of like tenderness or or like understanding and, and people can feel that so they don't get mad at us. And if they do, we can apologize. We want to just, you know, fess up as quickly as possible. But we communicate so much through our energy that it, it, when you have this gentleness way about you and when you're facing those fears, it can help ease some of that impact of the pain. And, and on the other side of fear is excitement. So it's really about taking those small steps because when you take those small steps, it builds your confidence. And it's like, oh, I can do this. Just like me with my writing. It was like, oh, you know what, I can do this. And, you know, little, little by little, you start to change. And then you notice, hey, I'm improving here. And it's a much better way to identify with yourself. So um, to know the nature of fearlessness, which is what we all really truly desire, is to know the nature of fear. So we have to start training in being fearless. And you can make it your daily practice. And you want to learn it and know it so well that it becomes something that excites you. The main difference between fear and excitement is what we call it. So if you notice a time in your life where you are super excited, you might have those same exact symptoms that you have when you're fear when you're fearful. Your chest might get tight. Your heart might start racing when you're excited. So what we can do is we can actually call it something else. We can actually, when the feel, fear arises, we can actually call it excitement. And I remember um, there was this time when I, I um, was leading my first workshop in New York City, and it was, there was about 20 people there. And I was sitting in a room, and I was sitting in the front, and there were 20 people there. And my heart started racing before we began, and I noticed it. And it was, like, really intense, like, throughout my body. I could feel this pounding. And instead of being like, oh, shit, I'm afraid, I said to myself, I'm alive. And it changed the way that I was relating to fear in my body. Because what would have happened is the symptoms would have gotten worse. So um, there, you can shift from calling it fear to calling it excitement. And even there's a story about Bruce Springsteen. Um, he's a musician, if you don't know him. But before he gets on stage, he feels this rush of energy, and his heart starts racing, and he gets these physical sensations. But he doesn't call it fear. He calls it excitement. So it's so much about how you relate to your fear And by changing the label, changing the meaning that you're giving it when you're in those moments, you say, oh, I'm excited because if if you think about getting through that fear, typically you're going to be really excited, okay? So um, when we go through that fear, doors open and you'll you'll be surprised at how much your life can expand. And if we want to be successful in any part of our life, we have to move through the discomfort of fear, not letting it stop us, but taking action. So in conclusion, feel it. Feel the fear, do it any, anyways. Um, and really, it's just, at the end of the day, fear is just an energy that we have to show up with, dance with it, and stop trying to run from it. So I'll leave you with a challenge. The next time you feel fear, whether it's in a conversation, like I mentioned before, or maybe I talk to people about this, about their when they're building their own business, posting something on Facebook about their business, putting themselves out there, telling someone and they love you, that you love them, being vulnerable. So the next time you feel it, take action and move through it. And I'll leave you with a quote because I love quotes. So take any, any emotion, 
love for a woman or grief for a loved one or what I'm going through, fear and pain from a deadly illness. If you hold back on the emotions, if you don't allow yourself to go all the way through them, you can never get to being detached. You're too busy being afraid. You're afraid of the pain. You're afraid of the grief. You're afraid of the vulnerability that loving entails. But by throwing yourself into these emotions, by allowing yourself to dive in all the way, over your head even, you experience them fully and completely. You know what pain is. You know what love is. You know what grief is. And only then can you say, all right, I have experienced that emotion. I recognize that emotion. Now I need to detach from that for a moment. And that quote is from Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album, And he had um, a deadly illness, but he talked a lot of, it was a really inspirational book about feeling feelings and um, really being fully engaged in your life. Moving on to key number three, which is one of my favorite topics, using visualization to connect with faith. When we're not connected with faith, we're constantly doubting ourselves. And we don't step outside our comfort zone. We might not even see opportunities available to us. We're not listening to our deepest desires or greater messages that we can receive. And we're totally boxed in. When I'm talking about faith here, is I'm not talking about it from a religious sense, but more from a general sense of like defining faith of like having a general sense of hope, trust, belief, and confidence. And this is something that is essential for our growth because without it, it's very difficult to make progress. And we even have to have faith in a class like I'm teaching right now that these tools can help us. And, you know, maybe you're doubting that this can even help you, but we have to have, even just if it's slight, a little bit of faith, and we have to connect with that little bit of belief in ourselves because it will make such a big difference in our lives. And sometimes we have moments in our life that we feel really connected to faith. However, my experience is that it's not, it's not on a day-to-day basis for me. I mean, there's like definitely a deeper feeling, but I'm not so connected to that on a day-to-day basis. It's more when we're in difficult situations, we're really feeling backed in, then we kind of call on our faith in those moments. But like anything, we have to condition our mind to be more connected with having faith in ourselves and in the world. Because if we don't believe at the core, we really have nothing to rely on. And this foundation is what we need to take leaps in our lives. And faith is about living in an open-hearted and courageous way and not in a closed-up, self-protecting way. Faith helps us overcome fear of pain. It helps us with grief and disappointment and stay open to new experiences and understandings. Every human being has extraordinary potential. I mentioned that earlier. And this is without exception. I mean, I, I love to see people who, like, are in really difficult situations that have overcome them. I mean, those stories just inspire me so much. I love to watch, um, you know, people who have, um, you know, sometimes, like, I like to watch wheelchair tennis and things of this nature because it's so extraordinary when somebody can really still access their potential that they have because we, ha- we all have it. And it's available to us, and we just need to learn to connect with it. So it's just, right now, it's just that we have developed a bad habit of thinking very limited. And so we have to condition our mind to believe. So if we're not feeling connected on a day-to-day basis, how do we get connected? That's really the big question here. And the way to do this is that... We have to use our imagination and have faith in ourselves in the world because we receive messages from the media and, and the media tries to scare us and all, this, all these advertisements and things like that are trying to distract us. But, and we can receive encouragement and support from our friends, from our loved ones, maybe even coaches, therapists, but only ourselves can put us in a state in faith. And that isn't to, to kind of 
be a bummer once again, but that's good news is that you have the power. The power is in your own hands. And yes, you can have support around you and you can, you know, I, I love to receive information and support from people around me because it helps me and we need that. But at the end of the day, we actually have to be the ones that are taking, taking matters into our own hand. And when we're in a state of fear, we're actually using our imagination. We're just using it in the wrong way. So if you think of a time when you're, you're in fear, you've kind of created this whole catastrophic event in your mind, and it's almost like you're living it even though it's not happening. And it's like most of the time we're not in that situation, but we're afraid of some future moment. Fear is most of the time future, unless there's somebody who has like a gun to your head or there's a tiger chasing after you, which is very, very rare. And most of the time, it's our, we're, our imagination is out of control. And so when we want to connect with our faith we, faith, we have to direct our imagination in a positive way. And we use this tool as a, as a child. we just forgotten about it. And when we use this tool in a childlike way, we can – we can move mountains, literally. Um, and I know for myself, I've used visualization. That was one of the key components to me succeeding in tennis is I really spent a lot of time visualizing myself on the court, visualizing myself winning. And whenever I had prepared myself mentally, I won. It was almost like a breeze. But when I didn't, totally different outcome. And even in my own life, for starting my own business, visualization was an extraordinary tool of, of me being able to visualize what I wanted, and it still continues to be um, something that I use almost on a day-to-day basis. So really shifting from fear to faith through visualization. And um, when the mind... When, when you visualize yourself on the other side of fear and you dream that new reality and you paint a mental picture and you add all the qualities and characteristics of what you want to experience there, most likely it, was, it will happen because the mind does what is familiar to it. And I'll say that again. The mind does what's familiar to it. So you want to familiarize yourself with fear so you know it, but you also want to familiarize yourself with using your imagination to redirect. Once you know it, then you can shift, okay? So when you pretend in your mind and you see it already, what happens is what is visualized by our mind becomes what we directly perceive. So some people will say, oh, I'll believe it when I see it, but it's actually the other way around. When you, when you believe it, wait, some people say they'll see it when they believe it, but it's actually the other way around. When you believe it, then you'll see it. So when you believe it and you have that faith, you actually see it in the physical world. You don't need to worry about the details, but you do need to take action. It's not like you can create this vision and then sit back and like, oh, I visualized it. You do need to take action, of course. And there's a story of um, NBA basketball players where they did a, a test, and there were three different groups. The first group practiced free throws, and they, they practiced for several days, practice on the free throw line. The second group didn't practice at all, so as you can imagine, what happened there. And the third group didn't practice, practice, they just visualized. And guess which group had the highest success rate? The group that just visualized. Why? Because they saw in their minds over and over and over again themselves practicing perfect. And so what had happened when they got on the court is they just, the mind had already had that imprint and went for it. Because the mind, and this is kind of crazy, the mind doesn't know the difference between what's what's real and what's imagined. It simply accepts whatever image you give it. Do things exist? Yes, of course things exist. But not in the way that we normally think that they do. They exist in a very different way, and most of the time we're not connected to that way. We're in some other imagination, but this is really about directing it towards what you want. So um, let's, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick visualization, just be a couple minutes. So I invite you to join me 
and close your eyes. And I'm going to guide you through a short visualization to transform your fear into faith. And start to relax your body and and tune into your breath. And bring to mind something that you've been afraid of. Maybe it's dating, maybe it's something in a relationship, starting a business, losing weight, not having enough money, speaking up. And just bring that situation to mind. And just notice your fear and feel it. Feel it in your body. And feel the physical sensation of when you think about it, the limited thoughts that arise. And just notice without grasping at any of it. Without any judgment. Now take a deep breath and just let it all go. And imagine yourself feeling fully connected to faith in your heart and in the world. And feel what that feels like. Maybe it feels a little bit more relaxed in your body. Maybe your breath starts to deepen. And then if you were feeling fully connected in your heart and you had faith in yourself and the world, what kind of thoughts would you have? What quality of thoughts would you have? Would you be thinking that you're powerful and resourceful? that you have everything you need to create the life that you imagine, that challenges will arise, but you can handle them. And, you know, maybe you get a little glimpse of that fear, but then you just feel it and you get excited about what's on the other side. You change the label and you see your life expanding. What actions would you see yourself taking in this area of your life? Really picture it. As if you had a level of certainty that things were going to work out. What would you see? And make it crystal clear. Get into the details of it. What would you be wearing? Expand your vision even more. What would wild success in this area look like for you? and make it even brighter. What kind of things would you say to yourself now? What would other people around you say to you? Maybe you would even hear more subtle noises in nature or just in general. You'd be able to listen better. And really start to feel what success would feel like for you in your body and fill yourself up with the intensity of that feeling letting your heart fully expand. And just notice where in your body you would feel that faith, that this area that has been so challenging and so scary for you, 
is now an area that you've embraced and that you've began to conquer. And hold this image in your mind and know that at any moment when you're in a state of fear, you can come back to this feeling and this image. Now open your eyes. And just take note of how you feel now in comparison to how you first felt when you got on the phone. And just notice if you feel a little bit more uplifted and connected with faith. So have faith in yourself. You are uniquely designed to face your unique set of circumstances. They are challenges for you to overcome, and on the other side, you will feel incredibly empowered. And when you're in a state of fear, just hang in there, hold tight, try to remember some of these tools that we went over with, and start asking yourself better questions, like what if, what if things go right instead of what if things go wrong? Because if you ask yourself better questions, you're going to get better answers. So I'll leave you with a quote, and then we'll do some Q&A. We can let the circumstances of our lives harden us so that we become increasingly resentful and afraid, or we can let them soften us and make us kinder and more open to what scares us. We always have this choice. So you can choose fear or you can choose faith, and hopefully I gave you some tools to be able to do that. And now I want to – well, actually, before we do Q&A, I just want to tell you that um, I will be opening up a new program that starts September 21st, and it's a six-week transformational course. It's called Stop Worrying, Start Enjoying, and it's six one-hour group coaching calls with weekly exercises and worksheets, and there's also a private online group community support, which I'll be um, involved in as well. And once again, that starts on Sunday, September 21st, and it's from 8 to 9 p.m., and the cost is 497 but if you sign up by September 15th it's 397 and if you sign up by Friday you'll also receive a 45 minute private coaching session with me so if you're interested in that you can also just send me an email with the subject line stop worrying start enjoying and now i want to open myself up to some questions we're kind of limited on time but we'll we'll make the best Anybody have any questions? No questions? Yeah, that was a Judy. <laughs> so hey, Judy. Might be, uh, a little... Hey, there's um, there might be uh, Gavin crying in the background. <laughs> um, That's okay. First off, I want to say uh, this has been amazing. Like it's just been refreshing to kind of hear um, the tips and tools that you've been talking about um, today. Um, I'm just curious to um, how do you feel? Could you can you you're, you talked about the tools and the experiences. Um, do you feel like it just kind of keep takes time? Like you just have to be patient and keep using these tools. Like yeah, I mean, I use. It's kind of a. <laughs> well, the key is really to start small. Uh-huh. Right to, to start with something that's like like I talked about on the call. Like start with start with a small project, something that you can work with, uh-huh. not like something really huge that like you're totally freaked out by. Okay, uh-huh. so you know the the keys are are different entry points. You can you can be able to say, okay, you know, I noticed my limiting thoughts and I shifted them, right? That's one way that you could you could manage your fear. Another way is through feeling it and doing it anyways. 
Another way is through imagining, you know, a different outcome and creating a clear mental picture. So it's kind of like a dance that it's not like, okay, when this situation arises, definitely use this tool. You have to be, you have mm-hmm. to have many tools, like these different tools to work with, because sometimes different, different situations will call for different experiences, but it's really like work, working with it. So it, it, have kind of like a playful attitude towards it. But, you know, I do find that, you know, myself included, I have to constantly work with my fear, especially like as an entrepreneur. I, I have to face my fear all the time. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen in my life. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I don't know if it ever goes away. I can tell you that I still experience fear, but my, my fear gets less and less, and I get better at managing it. Because before, it used to be debilitating for me. Like, I used to not be, I used to totally run. And then, you know, I notice in certain areas it improves, and then I still have some areas that are a little bit sticky. But then as I work in one area, the other area starts to open up a little bit better. So it's, it's, it's really about just, like, also just, just trying to be playful with it and, and enjoy the challenge. Does that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Great advice. Okay, cool. Anyone else? I, hi, uh, this is Misha. I have a question. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Go for it. Uh, great, thanks. How do I guide myself through a visualization? Great question. Fantastic. So basically what you want to do is um, the mind thinks in words and in images anyways, whether we're aware of it or not. But basically what you would want to do is be really intentional about it. And so you can do it through writing. Um, I've done this before where I write down what success looks like for me in a certain area, and then I get very detailed and specific about it. The best thing to do is to engage your five senses meaning what would it look like, what would it feel like, what would it taste like, smell like, what's the other one? Feel, look, smell. Oh. Hear? Did I say hear? No. What kind of thing yeah, would you hear? Sound like, yeah. 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 Right? So if you engage, the more that you engage your five senses and make it part of the visualization, um, it it will help you create the mental image. It can also help, I do this quite often too, I YouTube visualizations on certain areas that I want to improve. I like guided guided visualizations. So there's tons of, there's tons of information on the internet, use it. Um, You can also do it when you're waking up in the morning. You can actually do it there is something called active daydreaming, which is the same thing as visualization, but you're not closing your eyes. You're actually walking around, and you're just imagining the scenario of things working out for you. Um, so really it's tapping into that childlike self and, and just letting yourself really get into the imagination of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Visualization is fun. Anyone else? Questions? Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, everyone wants to speak up at the same time. Dan. I heard Dan first. Hi. Uh, really quick. Hey, Dan. Hi. Um, if you set yourself with a goal and you achieve the goal, um, you know, that, that was number one, you were saying... You, you know, try to visualize something that you've done that you kind of, you know, kind of like gone to the other side as in actually succeeded in. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the problem, you know, in my mind or, or what, you know, to get to that point, you basically made it your priority and you kind of like sidestep everything else. Like you put everything else on the back burner and you just focus on this one goal and you, you achieved it. And it's like, oh, great. And now it's like, well, now what? Didn't really help, didn't really help you. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Well, a few uh, things there. 
a few things there. You don't want to sidestep everything else because then it, becomes, it creates an imbalance, okay? And the idea is not necessarily that the goal is going to make you happy. I know it's totally confusing for us because typically we think the, goal, the end goal is what's going to make us happy. What I'm more suggesting is overcoming your fear is what's going to free you. So it's not necessarily about achieving the goal. The goal, I, I've achieved many goals, and I've ended up actually disappointed. Like, that's it? I got there, right. and this is, this is how it is? I wanted something else. <laughs> so it's not really about being attached to the outcome of, okay, it's more about improving your own self. There, there's a quote by Tony Robbins. He says, um, it's really about who, it's not about achieving the goal, it's about who you become along the way. So this is really about overcoming your fear and improving yourself because if we're making progress internally in our inner workings, we're going to be happier. The, uh, the external goal may or may not make us happy. Most of the time, in my own experience, it hasn't made me elated, which I find myself constantly working on the, the internal world, my mind, and you know, working with my own fears more or less because when I overcome a fear, I feel good. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Who's next? Hi, Anna. It's Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. Oh. Hey. So, um, just one question: When you have uh, limiting beliefs in multiple aspects of your life, what's the best way of going about almost? I guess, prioritizing which one to go after first, or is there um, kind of a blanket <laughs> way of going about it? Because I just know, like, it, it seems like it can be overwhelming when yeah. you feel like there's so many aspects of your life that you want to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and sometimes when we become more aware, we actually see all these things and we do get overwhelmed. But, um, the like kind of similar to what I said to Judy is it's really just about picking one project because sometimes when we, when we, when we shift one area, the other area shifts. So, um, pick, pick, when it comes to limiting beliefs, pick, pick one thing when you're talking about a priority, something that's important and, and the most urgent for you and work with that area first. And that's, that's something that I did on, like, first, my first objective when I was struggling was, okay, let me work on my career first. That time I didn't have a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, there are, there are other things that were out of alignment for me. But I said, okay, let me work on my career first. And then once I got that in line, then I could work on my relationships. And then I could work on, um, you know, improving my healthy habits and things of this nature. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So pick pick so one area good. because otherwise we spread ourselves too thin and we don't get where we want to go. So mm-hmm. so and sometimes there's a ripple effect that we prove one area, we become more confident in another, and then we get like, okay, I can take this on. Don't start with the most difficult thing first. Start with something that's more manageable, and then from there you'll build your confidence. You'll do the next thing and the next thing and the next. Mhm. I have one more question. Okay. Um, what if you have, uh, what if you're unable to pinpoint what it is that you're afraid of, that there might be multiple things that are tangled up and the root cause of what you're afraid of is not really clear to you? How do you find that? Great question, too. So um, when you identify the root cause... Um, okay, can you actually give me an example? Is that okay? Uh, I can't. The if thing not, is, I fine. don't know what it. I don't know Go what ahead. it is that I'm afraid of. Well, what do you think you're afraid of? What are you not doing that you would like to do? Um. Um, I, 
I, well, I guess I'm afraid that I'm not capable. But why do I feel that way? I don't know. Okay. Well, you don't necessarily even need to know why. I mean, sometimes it can be helpful. Um, but if you know that you're not capable, um, then is that true? Are you not capable? Capable of what? Of anything. Anything that I set out to do, I just have serious doubts about all the time. Okay, like what's one thing? Um, um, quitting my job and, you know, introspecting and then starting a, my own business. Okay, so you're afraid that you're not capable of starting your own business, is that right? Yeah, let's take that as okay. one, one of the many things. Okay, so let's just take that for an example. Is it true that you're not capable of starting a business? I've never started one. You, you never tried. Well, neither did I before I started one, <laughs> right? So what you're saying is you're saying, I need evidence to prove that I'm capable in order to be capable. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do as an action step is start looking for reasons why you are capable to start a business. Because right now you're focused on the limiting thoughts of why you're not capable. Does that make sense? Yes. And what I want you to do is actually shift to why are you capable? And you can even make a list. Mm. of all the reasons why you're capable to start your own business. And then from there, you can start brainstorming, what kind of business do I want to start? You might already even know this. What would be one small action that I could take to, in that direction? Because you don't, want to, you, want, you don't want to be too extreme where you quit your job and, and you haven't started your own business. I'm, I'm more of an advocate for smooth transitions. Okay? So... Start, start creating a plan, but most importantly, stop identifying with yourself as somebody who's not capable. Because on some level, I guarantee you you're not the only one on the call that has that feeling or that belief. Because it's very common. We all have it. And you don't know what you're capable of until you try. And you haven't even given yourself the chance. But first, start with your mind. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, because what, like I said, we we see it. We believe when we believe it, we see it. So if we believe we're capable, we'll start to see reasons why we are capable. But first it starts from you believing it. Even people that are wildly successful don't believe that they're capable. Even people who have their own businesses. Okay? I bet even Oprah on some level believes she's not capable at something in her life. <laughs> okay? It's part of the human experience, but we can't, we can't identify with that, that belief. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, one more. I have one more question. This is Maya before we dismiss. I was wondering, when do you know... If it's not fear and it's an obstacle, like, for example, it seems like every time I try to pursue um, my bachelor's degree, like, I could get my associate's fine, but every time I go back to school to pursue my bachelor's degree, it's either my Internet stops working or my computer breaks or it's, like, always a circumstance. So how do you know... And then now I'm at the point where I don't even want to do it because something may happen and I'm just like, forget it. So how can you challenge that? Because it's like from all the circumstances, now there's all this fear. From the circumstances, there's fear. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Well, there's always going to be yeah, obstacles. From pre- yeah, from, from previous, yeah, from previous obstacles, now there's, like, this fear, and now I'm just like, I don't want to attempt it. Well, well, let me ask you this. Do you know what you really want? Like, let's say, let's say fear 
you had no fear, what would you really want? I want to finish school. You want to finish school. So that's what you really want. Yeah. Yeah, that's what okay. I, I really so, want. Okay. So so are you you're 100% sure on that? 100% sure. You're 100% sure. Love it. Okay. So your question now is are you giving these obstacles meanings? What's the meaning that you're giving it? The obstacles I mean what? I mean that it's not, I can't do it. Like, I feel like once I go, now I'm going to be like, okay, yeah, I paid the application fee, which is non-refundable. I paid for all my transcripts, <laughs> which is non-refundable. <laughs> like, I feel like, okay, I'm going to put out all of this money to do it, and then something's going to happen, and then I feel like I wasted money. Okay. So you're you're afraid of wasting money. Yeah, again. Okay, like, that's your I actual wanna... fear. Yeah. yeah. Your actual fear is that you're afraid of wasting money. But you know what you want. So mm-hmm. sometimes, sometimes is the case, not always is the case, when we want something, we actually sometimes experience multiple obstacles. But what we want to be mindful of is those obstacles there are there, um, I don't remember, know if you remember the first quote that I gave from the key, right? Mm-hmm. If we have a positive mind, how do we perceive obstacles? Mm-hmm. Do you remember? No. If, if you have a positive mind, you'll perceive op- obstacles as opportunities for growth. Okay. Okay. Um, I know I use tennis examples a lot, but I just watched the U.S. Open, and there was this girl, she's 15 years old, and she won the national um, at eight, 18. She got a wild card into the U.S. Open tennis championships. She won the first-round match and lost the second-round match, but I read an article on her, and her coach was saying one of the main things that he saw in her was she saw challenges as opportunities. So if you saw these challenges as opportunities to grow and you didn't let them cause you fear, you might experience some fear, but you saw them as an opportunity to grow. You got through them, and you got through school. How would you feel? I was so very happy. Yeah. yeah. So very be careful happy. of what, what the meaning that you're giving those events. Just because there's obstacles doesn't mean that you're not capable and that you're going to lose money. You created that story. Uh, Does that okay. make sense? Okay. So I'm giving them value. And I shouldn't yeah. give them value. Okay. Yeah, just recognize them. Notice it. But you know what you want. You're clear. Yeah. Okay, so what's your action? I um, have to pursue it. Go through the process. Go, th- go through it. Of registration. Do it. And- there you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome. So thank you, everybody. I had a great time. Um, I really appreciate your patience. I apologize once again for the the wrong number in the beginning, but i um, glad you guys were able to go over and we were able to have time for questions. So, um, you know, I do want to, you know, if you have some questions, please email me. Once again, if you're interested in the course, also email me. Um, and I look forward to staying in contact with you in the future. So have a great night, and thank you very much. Thanks so much, thank Anna. You. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks, Anna. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for helping me also. Thank you. <laughs>